Amin wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Allahumma inna nastawji'aka ma qara'nahu wa ma naqra'ahu wa ma fi hadhal majlis wa ma qablahu ma ba'da fa ihfazhu alayna hatta tardu hatta tardahu ilayna waqt ihtiyajina ilayhi ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma akrimna bi nur al fahm wa kharijna min dhulumat al wahm wa iftah lana abwaba rahmatik wa anshur alayna hikmatik ya arhamar rahimin amin wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Allahumma man la yamqal al umur kullaha bi yadihi wa ilayhi yarja'u al amr kullah ya fattah ya alim ya fattah ya alim ya fattah ya alim iftah alayna fathan qari وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقد من سني فقه وقولي وصل لساني وهلي قلبي وفعل كذلك بأحبابي أبدا وارزقنا كمال فتوح العارفين والفقه في الدين مع كمال إخذ السرق اليقين والعافية وغنى ونسر وحفظ النفع وانتفاع وخير وخير الدارين وعلوم الأولين والآخرين آمين صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا Amin Alhamdulillah 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 um, Alhamdulillah I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala For gathering us Alhamdulillah uh, Whether it be in person In in our uh, ruh In our spirits In our souls Or, uh, or online you know, in, in all dimensions inshallah and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he subhanahu wa ta'ala as he has continued to gather us under uh, uh, to get, as he has continued to gather us with the one intention to want to worship him to the best of our abilities to get close to him subhanahu wa ta'ala to give this worship Uh, it's right as far as we are able to and we know we are unable to and no matter how hard we try we are unable to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he rightfully deserves to be worshipped which is why he subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar-Rahman ar-Rahim right that he accepts from us in spite of our our weaknesses and our uh, and our um, shortcomings you know mashallah um And we know that this is the point of our existence. So through, uh, for, from, for, through our lives, till we die, and we will be striving on this. Today, inshallah, we are on our fourth hurdle, right, between a servant and a minister of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this hurdle, it is a hurdle of distractions, right? And in this, um, in this hurdle, you know, we mentioned that there are four, four different uh, uh, dimensions, right, to this hurdle, or four different um, ways by which a person can get distracted uh, in this in this dunya from worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the first one is basically risk right seeking risk and here he brings us into uh, the in, into the conversation uh, or into his explanation on about tawakkul and the and the definition of tawakkul and its uh, its reality Ya, mashallah. Right, and today, inshallah, we will be finishing the section on tawakkul, and inshallah, we'll be going on to the next one, which is basically about risks. Right, so risks <laughs> sounds like it sounds like an Arabic word. Eh? Risk, risks. Right, so not not risk. Right, as there was previously a risk. <laughs> this is an risk. This is risk. <laughs> right. Uh, basically, um, you know, um, you know, any uh. Worries, okay, worries or you know, dangers that fears, right? Fears, right? So this is another um, distraction, right? That that a person uh, he he you know he has fear in his heart. So the risks inherent in everything that he fears or hopes for. Right, so you know, in, in, we would uh, and mashallah is such a beautiful <laughs> translation, you know, because you know. Subhanallah, this is in, in, in my own personal experience and I hope everyone else here who's listening in that is also your own personal experience that every part of 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 um of the book uh Minajil Abidin every section has 
It is like when you come to that section, it's exactly what you need right now. <laughs> right? It's like, like Subhanallah. This is must have, must have been one of the niyats of Maghazali. And MashaAllah, may Allah have mercy on his soul and reward him greatly on our behalf. And in fact, we have not begun the, the we have not begun uh, the book uh, proper. Eh? We should begin, begin it proper, Inshallah. Right? But after reading this, and then I will, I will, Inshallah, when before I read the book, I will begin it proper by. Uh, we can do our for the author, inshallah. Right, so uh, the risks uh, inherent in everything, right, that we fear or hope for, right, fear of separation, fear of loss, right, fear of um, di- something diminishing, fear of the unknown, fear of moving from a transition from from a p- point in life to another point in life, right, fear of beginning a new chapter in life and ending another chapter in life. A lot of a lot of fears, <laughs> like and hopes that you come into something you hope. Right, Right, that, that, that in it there is you know there is this love uh, goodness right you hope you know and a lot of things at the same time you know there is this hesitation you know mashallah there's a lot you know, subhanallah this is this, this section there will be a lot of discussion here on how we're so distracted by all of these things right that we tend to lose sight and lose focus on why we are here in this existence in the first place and fear we know that fear can really um, paralyze a person right in a, it's a form of a distraction that in our society, you know, people suffer uh, and really suffer from anxiety attacks, right? From all kinds of uh, fear, right? So, uh, so and his hopes for and and so on. So the so of what he desires and what he detests, right? So he does not know whether his cause is right or wrong in that res in that respect, right? Because of the consequences for all matters are obscure. Right? His heart is concerned about them, right? For he might lapse into some. Uh, depravity or some parallel situation. So basically, this part. So again, we're in this dunya, right? And he, Imam Mazali, will uh will expand on this. Right? So today we're going to go into the the next the next part of hindrances. Yeah? So we're, we're almost finishing with tawakul. <laughs> Inshallah. So going into the part of fear, right? Fear, yeah, <laughs> fear of risks, right? And this is a distraction. Right? So when you go in something and you're worried that. So what, what, what might happen? <laughs> uh, that is a distraction eh? in this dunya. Right. Then there's a third part about hardships and misfortunes, right? Which which has come to a person. And so it's also a distraction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the last one is on the uh on, on the qadr, right? So we're at number two right now. And we spent a long time on number one on risk. Right, inshallah. So the so and I have I I think I stopped yeah. I don't I don't do any more slides. Inshallah I have more time I do I do I'll do some more slides. Right. So uh, I think we are all the way uh, down to our, our, I'm, I'm teaching from the book right? so inshallah I think all this have gone through okay yeah <laughs> okay I'm just gonna gonna leave the, the slide here right? <laughs> because I, I'm the, no time to make slides <laughs> alhamdulillah Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Min kitab Minhaj al-Abidin Ila Jannati Rabbil Alamin Lil Imam Al-Mujaddid Uhjad al-Islam Wal-Muslimin Zain al-Din Abi Hamid Muhammad bin Muhammad bin Muhammad Min Ahmad al-Ghazali Al-Tusi Al-Tabarani Al-Shafi'i Radiyallahu anhu Wa nafa'ana Allahu bihi Wa bi'ulumihi Fiddarain Ila anqal Okay, we're here In the English And some might say Okay Okay Bismillah Right, so we are, you know, for those of you who have the black book, we are on page one five. Sorry, one five seven. Give okay, one page one five seven. If you have the Arabic book, the blue book, uh, we are on page one six six. Yeah, right, one six six. Right, so he and he's going to finish the chapter uh very very soon. Right, because he is going to address a few more things. Right, uh, so in in Tawakkul, he gave us the definition. He gave us. Um, uh, what is you know how do we understand what is tawakkul? He spoke about the benefits of those who have tawakkul in the Quran. Mashallah. So Imam Ghazali he went to all of his aspects in tawakkul and he made it very clear that putting in effort, right? It does it is it, putting in effort or not putting in effort, right? Is not a matter of having tawakkul or not. All it is it is the state of the heart. Right, and the attachment of the heart. Right, so when he says here, and if you were to say the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he right took provision when he went on travels and so did the companions and the righteous uh, of, of the past right so what do you say about that and you see how he like he, he likes to or he he has his, his method of uh, bringing up questions 
that someone might say, then he will address the question. Right? So his book is comprehensive. So nobody later on will have any other questions or any other misunderstandings. So if someone says, oh, but the Prophet also also put in effort. Yes, it's true he put in effort, but he never depended on his efforts. Right, and we went through it last uh, last week. Right, he went through it last week. That when he went went for hijrah, he took so many lengths, right, to to ensure that no one caught him, to ensure. I mean, not not to ensure, but in a sense, he he put in his effort. He didn't just walk out of Makkah in broad daylight and then go to Medina, right? But he made sure it was at night. And Musayna Ali, like as a decoy, right, in his bed. I right, so they would think that he's still there, and then they, it, will, it will delay their searching for him. He went down south instead of going up north, right, because Medina was north. He went south, right. Then he was hid in a, in a cave for three days because he knew the search party will be uh will be searching for him the moment they know that he is gone, right. He and then he stayed there until the coast was clear. Then he took entire sea routes all the way out. I right, so it was like, like a lot of planning on the side of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but there was no point. In his migration, that he depended on himself and his plannings, and which is why uh, there was a statement that he said Sayyidina Abu Bakr, or Abu, when they were in the cave, and Sayyidina Abu Bakr became very uh, anxious and worried. Right, that he says, "Oh Abu Bakr, what do you think of two? That Allah is their third." Right, so he didn't say that. Oh Abu Bakr, you know, we have put all this planning, we have done all these things. You know, they will not find us. It's okay. We we know we made made sure that they will not get to us. And and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala caused for them to walk right up to the mouth of the cave. <laughs> and it was a matter of a spider right, coming there and building his web that caused them. And it was also a matter of Allah putting it in the. Um, in the mind of Abu Jahl, right? That you know, how could someone go through you know uh, this this cave of spider, the spider web there? He didn't even think to just look, right? You think he just he just a split second, just you know, even if you don't think anyone could go through, right? He could just bend and just look right, inside, right? I mean, what stopped him from doing that? It was just it was just a, a movement. They were all the way there already. And if you ever been to Jabal Thur, right? Jabal Thur is a very high mountain to climb, and it's a difficult, steep mountain to climb. Right? So the fact that they actually followed the tracks of Rasulullah Sallam all the way there to the point they reached the mouth of the cave, and then uh, the, the the tracker said to them, "Okay, here is where the tracks end. So either he went to the sky or he went into that cave." <laughs> the tracker said he said that right so so like like you're thinking uh, just look won't hurt right just just look inside and you find the two of them right there and now Bakar said to Rasulullah so yeah Rasulullah if you just look to your feet they would just see us right there it was that close right they could they could they could they, they were that close to Abu Jahal and uh, and it wasn't just any of the of the disbelievers it was Abu Jahal himself right who wanted uh Rasul some dead or alive right he was the one who was going around with the search party. And so in nowhere did Rasul uh, mention any of his efforts. He put in so much effort, right? But there was nowhere that he mentioned his efforts. But it was his complete reliance on Rasul, on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. There was the the part that made it clear, lah. You know, mashallah, like on the on on about. So his answer to this, if you say, oh, but the Prophet took his provision and he put in effort. Yes, he did as a form of obedience, as a form of uh, ibadah. But never ever did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam depend on himself. Or his efforts, and it was always uh, entirely on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. <laughs> the rest of them, I think, busy. <laughs> right. Um, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Right. So he said that there is no. So there is no. So so he says to him. He makes he makes it clear here. He know, and he repeats himself. There is no blame in putting in effort. Right. In putting in effort that is uh, you know to to get sustenance that is permissible. Right, as long as you don't go into the haram, right, there is no blame whatsoever. Right, um, it, it's not saying that it's haram to try and look to try and look for sustenance or to try and put in effort. It's not haram. It's permissible. What is haram? Right, that he made it clear. What is haram is that you place dependence on the thing that you have searched for or that you 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 are using. Ah, uh, that is haram. Right, that you attach your heart to that money. That you need this money to survive, or you need to do this thing for you to survive, or you need to like instead of attaching your heart to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and that is where he says is haram. Right? So it's not haram to put in effort. Effort is ibadah. What is haram is that you place dependence on the creation. Ah, uh, that is the part when he says eh, instead of dependence on the Creator, right? Subhanahu wa taala. So he says, "Fafham dalik." So understand that, right? That he so, and he's gonna he's gonna stop his discussion at this point already. Right? He said this many times. I right? said so, because the same question keeps coming up. He's saying you ask, 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 and the answer is still the same. 
Right, it's not haram to go and seek, you know, put in effort. You put in effort. It's a point. It's, it's a type of ibadah. I right? obviously, as he has said, understand this. Right, what is not permissible is that you depend on yourself or you depend on the creation. It means you think it is the creation that 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 that, uh, that gives you is a creation that provides for you. The creation that not nourishes you is a creation that gives you tranquility and peace. Ah, uh, is it that 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 is the part right, whereby you are mistaken? Uh, it ne- was never the creation. It will never be the creation. Uh, it's not you. It's not your family. It's not your uh, wali. It's not your husband. Not no, 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 no your father. Allah is the one who provides. Right? Subhanahu wa taala. Right? Our efforts are just merely. Uh, uh, no, mashallah. Our efforts in doing anything is in in fulfilling the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa taala to worship. Right? To put in effort and to worship. Right, so he says. So, so he says. You know, and how could a person think that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has taken all this provision, and he he is uh, dependent on these things? Right? How would you think that? You know, how could you even think that in the first place? And it's not possible. When he sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the verse has been revealed to him. Uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajim Wa tawakkal ala al-hayy al-ladhi la yamut. Right, so that verse has come down to him, right, and to trust and to rely. Uh, firmly on the one who is alive who will never die so he is the one who has gotten wahyu he's gotten all these verses coming down to him sallallahu alaihi wasallam and even in his life he has seen you know without a father without a mother without him being an orphan that like, all the way allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who has been supporting him so is it is it possible in any way that him taking food right like, is uh is him relying on the food Right, it's not possible, right? He's so Allah Alaihi Wasallam. He's doing this right, as a form of obedience, as a form of uh, worship. So he will not disobey Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala by connecting his heart or by attaching his heart right, to the food or to the drink or to the gold or to the silver, the dinar and the dirham that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala uh, has given him. Right? Of course not. And he is beyond. You know, he's above doing that. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is completely reliant on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala throughout his da'wah. He could even care less when they came to him and they said to him um, that they're going to fight him, they're going to persecute him, they're going to or they try to bribe him by. Saying, you know, what do you want, right? And he tried to give him uh, wealth and women and uh, and authority over them, right? But he refused all of it, right? Because he is he is a person who is commanded. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's not afraid of anything. When someone is like that, then they only have one focus, and that's Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Right? So no matter what people say, it's right. He knows he's not dependent on what they are offering to him, right? For this uh, message to uh, to manifest. Right, so he will not disobey Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and attach his heart to the food and to the drink. Right, how could he do that? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he's the best of examples. So we follow him. We take we take the 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 means right, because it's the way Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has allowed for us to obey him. And that is the ways of, of obedience, right? But we don't attach ourselves to this thing, saying that oh, if I if I don't do this, this will not happen for me. You know, if I if I don't uh, take this, you know, I will I will suffer. Right, in, in in that way, right? So we don't attach our hearts to it, right? So he says, uh, so so the 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 reliance of the Prophet Sallallahu on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is complete, it is perfect, it is absolute, right? and that he uh is the one who has and he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the one who never even glanced at the dunya, right? Even for even for a tiny bits of dunya, he could even care less. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and whatever he took. Right, he would give it out in charity. He had no, he, he, he never, never sought to to take and to keep, right, which means which shows complete non-reliance on all these things of the dunya. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, right, and then he never stretched out his hands right to the king to the keys of the treasures of this earth. Right, he was offered right the the mountains uh, to be gold. He was offered and he showed them what is real. Um, what is real elevation of Allah subhanahu wa taala to be not interested in any of these things, right, and that. He has, and and the reason why he has taken all this provision, right? It is, and 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 also, you know, what our righteous have have, have done, the Sahaba, they taken provision. It is just with the with the intention of doing goodness, right? It's for them to to perform ibadah, right? So, and their hearts never even for a moment inclined towards these things, which is why it was easy for them to give it up, because they never they didn't think that I need this amount for me to survive. Uh, they, ne- they never, they never, they uh, never let themselves think that, right? So, so what, so what is the what is important here is, uh, is is what is the what is the qasid 
Uh, what is the intention in taking the Z, uh, in taking the provision? Uh, so if the intention is that you're going to depend on that and not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you are, uh, then you, then you have been, uh, you're mistaken and you are sinning. But if the intention is that, okay, you know, I'm, I intend to use this in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get rewarded, right? Then that is, uh, the correct intention, right? So he says, so, so, so pay attention, right? So pay attention, what is your intention, uh, to what is your intention? Then he says, Right. So now comes the next question. This is this last question for this for this chapter? <laughs> he says, comes the next question. Right. So, uh, so which is better, to take provision or to leave it? <laughs> right. So now that he's really made his case, kind about the whole point, right, is dependence on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Which is better, to take provision or to leave it? Then he says, well, that depends <laughs> on your state. <laughs> right. He goes back to your the state of the heart. Because tawakkul is the obedience of the heart. Right. That is, is, is the worship of the heart. So he says here, so know right, that, uh, that the, the answer to your question, it depends on people's states. Right. So the person... Like who you know who 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 wants to show right that taking provision is permissible, right? Or he intends in taking provision to help another Muslim, or he intends in taking provision right to bring to someone who is in need, right, to get rewarded for that. Then for him, whatever he has intended, and so taking will be better for him, right? Because you know he's intending that okay, this is not I'm not going to depend on it, uh, but I'm just taking this provision right to for for ibadah for worship. However, if he's taking it, uh, provision, right? Uh, and this is and this so this first case is that someone who is you know uh, someone who is uh, whose whose heart is strongly attached to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and relying rely on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? So, however. Right. However, if a person, right, in taking provision, he's going to busy himself with his provision, and he's going to take his time away from his ibadah. Right. So he's going to be worried about his provision, and because of that, he's not going to do. He's not going. Not going, not, not going to worship Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Then leaving it is better for him, because otherwise he'll be so worried right, about this uh, provision that he has that he has taken. Right. So it. Uh, so, so he says in that case, right, because you're going to be distracted from your ibadah, because you're going to be thinking about the gold and the silver and the, uh, like for us, in our case, like our, our, our money, right, for example. And, and mashallah, we, we do really think, we do feel that you go to the masjid and you bring nothing. Like, you can pray in peace. <laughs> you don't think like, like my bag is somewhere or like, like, or you put your bag in front, you know, that kind of thing. And all like, if you have to put it behind, then your mind's like, someone take it. Someone, <laughs> like, your mind is, is distracted. It's, it's, it's thinking about what you brought like, with you. Right? So, but if you just leave it away, leave it at home and you go to the masjid with nothing, you know, hands free. Right? This is just a very um, like, um, small example lah, right? About, of a bigger example. Right, of people who don't depend on their on their provision, so that's what that's what he means by it's distraction. It is, it is distracting because you keep thinking about it. <laughs> like, where is it? Who's who's there? What are they doing? And what are you, and you also distracted in, in your prayer. But if you go to the masjid, hands free, where nothing is you know placed anywhere, and right, then your you are focused on Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in your prayer. And that is one of the situations, lah. But of course, to a, to a bigger scale, right, he's saying that uh, if you're going to be completely obsessed with your work or with your uh, job that it is it is taking you away from your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you think that I have to do this right, for me to survive and because of that a person leaves a prayer uh, then they are deluded uh, they cannot do that right? they need to understand that their point in this existence is worship right? they need to to, 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 to to not do that there is complete there is, there is very strong tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right? so if he's going to be busy Right, by by his uh, provision right, from from worshiping Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, then to leave it is better, um, and so understand all of this in its entirety, and uh, guard over it right in in goodness, and he says Wabillahi Taufiq. Right, so he ends the chapter right about provision. Right, so mashallah, he ends that part. Right, so now he says the second one. Right, the second thing that comes a person's way, right, is al akhtaru wa iradatuha wa qusuduha. Right, so basically a person's hopes and fears. So basically things that occur to them in their in their heads, right? So or in their minds about life and what they want, right? So uh, and and him worrying that 
they don't get it or they worry that it won't come to them they worry that uh they die before it happens or they worry it's basically it's all worries lah it goes into like the distraction of worry so the first distraction is distraction of risky second distraction is distraction of worry we mentioned we mentioned before that all of it stem from one thing right they all they seem to be the same thing like you worry about risk so on top of this they worry about all kinds of things so he says this is uh, the the solution but he breaks it up right, because people uh they keep falling into this right so he says that the the, the biggest the, the the cure for this is tawfid right tawfid meaning entrusting the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i right? don't worry don't fear i right? don't think that oh if if i if i don't uh you know don't, don't think that, oh i'll never get married oh i'll never this i'll never that right how you can worry all you want you won't know right it's not is 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 you won't even know if you will you'll live till tomorrow so the tawfid a right? tawfid that means you and trust your affair to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala focus on the now and the now is what right, you have a choice obey or disobey khalas finish right, this is basically his answer is actually one statement but he will keep going into all the different questions lah because people will keep asking him what about this what about that what about this and he will answer every single one right, to make it very clear to people right, no matter how much you worry and how much you fear what will happen will happen Right, what will be will be. You know, you can't, you can't, you can't stop it. Right, but it's a matter of you choosing uh, obedience or disobedience. So he says here, and it is enough for you. You know, in, 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 in what what will stop you from being distracted by this by this hurdle, right, is tafwid. Right, for alayka bi tafwid al amri kullihi ila Allah subhanahu wa taala wa zalika li amrin. Right, so so it's on you to entrust the entire matter to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right, so it, you know, like even uh, in the bringing up of your children in your household, in all these things, like we can worry <laughs> as much as we want, right? But there's nothing you can do about it. Right, if you think about it, it's nothing you can do about it. You just, you just live your life. If a person is meant to die, they die. If they're meant to live, they live. Right, if they, you know, Subhanallah, it's a it's a matter of obedience again. He goes back down. So don't don't let these things distract you. I right, so or, or paralyze you right from going into this. This is why this is the part about um fear and anxiety, right? So it, it is you know is is really the cure to it uh, to fear and anxiety. <laughs> the cure to fear and anxiety is really you need to entrust the matter to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right, so like you know if a person wants to go for exam, they have you know anxiety attacks when they go for exam. Or they want to go for even Hajj and Umrah, they have anxiety attacks. Or they went, they want to go for a job interview, they get anxiety. All of these things basically bring to your mind that that you know, as long as you are in obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, like think to yourself, and he will mention this later on. What's the worst that could happen? Like basically, what's the worst that could happen? Right? <laughs> so for example, like an exam, what's the worst that could happen? You fail. Okay. Try. Do you try your best? Yeah. Do you try your best in studying? You didn't try your best then. <laughs> Then try hard lah. It's time. What are you going to do about it? You can't at that point. You're at the exam hall already. Khalas, the time has passed, <laughs> right? I mean, what what are you worried for? Right? What 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 can you do at this point? Right? And then oh, worried. Then, so 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 oh, do you do do you study it? Yeah, study for it. Then do lah. And then what if I fail? Then there's a door that's closed. Alhamdulillah. Allah closed one door. Allah opened another door. Right? That is basically tough with. Right, that you really put in your the best of your best effort, and we know in our experience in life, it has happened to us so many times. So worried about something, and then even if it's not meant for you, something else opened up for you. If it was meant for you, you go in, you go through it. You know, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> as long as you're in a state of obedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, everything is good. Kudus Shikhair. Right, everything, everything, everything is good for you. So it's a matter of of really being very, very practical <laughs> about situation. Right, so if you know, and this is something that you know, you know, Allahu Alam. But we need to really educate our children and ourselves on it. Right, what is the point of worrying, 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 and then going into a lot of you know, what if, what if, what if, what if, what if, and then you you become so distracted, one thing, and become so heavy, become so like, and then like. And you're worrying about things that hasn't even occurred, or maybe will never even occur in the first place, and you're just wasting your time. Right, so this is a tough week, and it's tough week. Right, so mashallah, Imam Ghazali is very like you know, just step out of it. Right, it's just, just you know, and and what he was later on, he was you know, think of the worst case scenario. What's the worst case scenario? Right, and you think about that. Okay, done. Right, if you can can handle the worst case scenario, then you're not supposed to be. I mean, dah lah, habis, finish. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, so so mashallah, you know, and then you have you have entrusted the entire matter to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, <laughs> and 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 then you just carry on with your life. Allah, <laughs> Allah Hamad Sadiya Ala Sidna Muhammad. I don't know whether it's easier easier said than done because I don't know Allah Alam learning minhaj. So you know, what has made me very <laughs> like you know unfeeling. Eh? <laughs> Allah Alam, it's not unfeeling, but it's just that. When you learn minhaj, after a while, anything, really anything that happens to you, you just put it on a scale. And then you learn to just, okay, I'm okay with that. Uh, life goes on. <laughs> right, and then you go on, you move on. Right, so I don't think it's, you know, being apathetic, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's just that dunya, you know. Uh, yeah, I guess, wow, well, inshallah. <laughs> So, to s- yeah, emotional <laughs> struggle, worry, this and that. But then you put it on the scale of what can you do about it? <laughs> then you like, I've done all I could. <laughs> That's why. Uh, and then you just get out. Then this is why you let go. Oh, for Allah, Amri ila Allah, and Allah basiru bil ibad. I I entrust my method to Allah subhanahu wa taala. Allah sees His servant. He's which is why I do all before sleep. Of what to like, uh, for to amri like, and I entrust my matter to you, right? Before you sleep every day, so whatever is the matter, Allah will handle. Don't worry, and 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 we see Rasulullah SAW, he never once worried. As Allah Alaihi Wasallam, he knows that Allah will handle it, and Allah will cause for this matter to spread far and wide. He you know he knows that Islam is going to conquer lands all around the world, and he is going to and Allah is going to preserve this message till the day of judgment. There will be people who will come and hear this, and every generation there will be people who will renew this faith. Imam Ghazali was one of them, and Alhamdulillah for Imam Ghazali, right? That he has made it so clear to us that you know get to the next world. Let's just just get through this, let's tahan, let's tahan and get to the next world. You know, inshallah, and inshallah, it will be a day of rejoice, uh, of of rejoice. Uh, rejoicement for us, for us, of joy, you know, of pleasure, inshallah, and where 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 everyone will be united forever and ever, inshallah, in paradise. It's just a very short one. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. I suffer alayka bi tafwid al amri kullihi ila Allah subhanahu wa taala wa dalika li amrin. And that is only f- that is for two things, right? So 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 why? So he says, so he always begins it by the two motivations. Right, why a person should 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 go into tafwid? I should go into entrusting the matter to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. What word they use? Uh, entrusting, eh? Delegation. Okay, <laughs> in delegating or in entrusting, like, Basically, you just you know place the whole thing with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And it's if Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in the first place, whether you realize it or not, <laughs> it's if Him Subhanahu Wa Taala. But it's just that you need to let go. Now, that's the thing about our you know our our society. We say let go. Meaning, let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And, he, and not that you're letting him He's always been doing it <laughs> it's, it's that you need to stop thinking That you are in control of the wheel <laughs> That you're not in control of any wheel <laughs> You know, you're just, um, you're just You're a slave commanded That's all you are A slave commanded The master is the one in, that's always in control and Subhanahu wa ta'ala right, so, it, uh, so he says here right, That uh, uh, so, so he says here So the first one Right for uh, to manina of your of your heart in in every situation, right. So it, for the for the tranquility of your heart, right. Because you can't worship if you keep worrying. Right? You, you just can't focus on your worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right. So so and this is actually carries on the risky part. Right. So if someone thinks that okay, if I don't do this, then you know I won't. Like what happens to my future? And like what happens to this? What happens to that? Uh, they, 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 they think actually that they're in control of their future. Right? And then they say, so I have to. I have to. Uh, like, you know, like people in the past, they would say, oh, you know, if you cover up, who wants to marry you? And who will marry you? Because you're covering up, you're not, you know, dressing up, you're not, this, you're not that. Nobody wants to go and marry you. Right? I mean, if you place that as, uh, you know, like, that, like you know, I have to do this for someone to be interested in me in the first place. Right? If you think that way. I mean, but if you, if you, if you leave the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so there's a fear there, like a fear of, oh, I'll never get married. I'm so afraid. I'll never get married. I'll never get married. I'll never get married. Like, oh. <laughs> and people, and it's a real, real fear. People think that. Like, I mean, it's, if, it's, if it's meant for you, it's meant for you. Alhamdulillah. Do what is, do what is commanded. What is commanded? Covering your aura. 
my day is commanded cover your aura <laughs> yes. right. and, and, and Allah will send you you know inshallah someone to help you with your religion you know, and this, this is your dua your dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the, what, what other fears do people have people tend to have fears of um, I don't know what do people fear <laughs> and their hopes and their, and their fears in life right that they um, Allahumma salli ala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so I don't know what they people, people fear they fear losing their job uh, if you lose losing their job, uh, so if, if for example, say if, I, if I don't lie on the job, I'm gonna lose my job. Right? So like for example, a business person, right? if I, if I, then I'll lose my job and I won't get any recommendations and I won't. Right? Lying is haram, halas. Right? There's no there's no discussion there. Right? You be truthful, right? In your you know in your transactions, and right? that is what is wajib. And so you don't think that you don't you don't you don't uh, worry that oh if if I if I if I don't do if I don't comply to what they want. Right, and and that is against my religion. Right, then you know, then something will happen as if they are in control. They are not in control. Allah is in control. Right, Subhanahu wa taala. Right, so mashallah. So he says here. So the first one is for your heart to be at peace, at rest. Right, that whatever uh, you face in decision, right, that you as long as you take the the way of worship, right, which is the best way by which you can worship Allah Subhanahu wa taala, that is enough for you. Right, so the the matter is that. Right, if it is um if there is an unknown uh danger or risk there, an unknown risk there, right, you don't know what it is in the first place, right? Nor do you know how to protect yourself from it. Right? So they said, Oh, there are unknown risks here. And you're like then what do you want me to do? <laughs> right, you yourself don't even know what the risks are. It's unknown risks. And the entire life is unknown risks. <laughs> right? So like what what can you do? You can't even you can't even plan anything. Right? You don't know what to what to address. There's nothing to be addressed. Right? What what is to be addressed? You know, mashallah. So he says you don't even know how do you get away from the risk. <laughs> you even know what it is. <laughs> you know, subhanallah. Right? But to trust Allah subhanahu wa taala. So he says if you if you were to um and it is so so you it, it would it would be it would just uh behave you on your heart. Right, and then it will cause you worry on yourself, right? And you just go into this entire matter, right? So like sometimes it does matter, you know, like that, it does matter a lot, you know, that the people go into all this worry and everything, right? That uh, and Allahu Alam people can have their opinions, but when you like, especially when you when people look into the womb, and they say, oh, your baby is gonna be like this and like that and like this and like that, and then and then you get so worried, right, about what the doctor's saying about your baby. Right, and you're, but you're, but you're thinking to yourself, I'm not even going to abort this child. I'm going to keep the child, right? Then you spend your whole entire nine months all in worry, 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 worry. But the thing about it is that you don't even know what you can do, right? I mean, mashallah. Of course, you can make your dua, mashallah, and that's it's called tafwid. Right, you make your dua, you do your sedaka, you uh, read your sins, right? You do what you can, and that is called tafwid. That like you leave it to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right? Then, then dah lah, dah. The, the dua, you do your tahajjud every night, you make dua, you do your yasin, you do whatever you know, you know, people tell you to do this, this, this ratib, this hizab, this, that, do lah, do all of these things, and then whatever Allah has decreed will come, you can't, you can't stop it right, from happening, but then you're wasting your, in a sense, your, your, all of these emotions, right, in all this worry, 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 right, but to have a, a calmness in the heart, I've done all that I can, it's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala It's always been up to him <laughs> Subhanahu wa ta'ala So it's a matter, it, it has to push you to a point of, of, of worship right? Instead of a point of uh, like Despair or distraction Or uh, feeling uh, feeling depressed You know, that kind of things that comes to a person And they come paralyzed And they come worthless They don't want to worship want to do this. And they, become, they go into a spiral Right, so that's why it can happen to them in that way. Right, so but you know, keep to your uh, ibadah. If it pushes you more towards ibadah, then alhamdulillah, and that is the whole point. Uh, that's the whole point that he's saying here. Right, so it will, it will, uh, it will hit hard on the heart, right, and it will cause the worry of the self. You know, and then and, and you don't even know like, how to get out of it. Right, you don't even know. And you don't even know whether it will happen or it will not happen. You don't know if you were going if you're going to be saved or you will be or you will be harmed by it. You have no clue, right? So it just you know, Subhanallah. It just it's just a matter of entrusting the entire matter to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and that you know that you 
uh, uh, that, that you are not the one right, who will cause for it to be uh, all better or all worse. You don't know. You really don't know. Right? You tr- trust the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do you know what you know of worship right, to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, so it will. Uh, it's not. It's not by you in any way. Right? So he says here. Right, so then you will become. So if you do, if you do this, right, then you will be uh, at peace from any worry, right, about or any um any any worry or about any um uh uh dis- destruction, right, or anything that goes wrong in any way, and your heart will be at peace. Right, because you have done what you can, right, you have uh, uh, placed your reliance completely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they all seem to be of the same topic. Right? They all seem to be going back to the same thing right? of, of, under, of understanding that Allah has taken this upon Himself, whether you understand that or not. Right? Right? So you trying to control things has never placed you in control, ever. It's that you think that you're in control, but you're being distracted right? from the real case of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Minhaj, mashallah, and one of my friends said that every every chapter in Minhaj can be made into one whole, you know, like one one whole seminar, you know, like one whole whole thing to talk to people about. And Imam Mazali, he really laid out everything so well, mashallah, and um, and and he says that our teacher, our Sheikh, right, he, you know, just uh, so so this is so this is uh tranquility, and tranquility is a gift, right? It is it is a gem. That Allah has placed in the heart of a person. So if someone has tranquility, no matter what happens to them, they have rest. And the rest of the heart, right, is the uh is the richness of the heart. <laughs> Mashallah. <laughs> right, and, and it is so which is why, you know, those who are always worried, 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 it is a form of impoverty, right? And and uh or impoverishment. You know, but the one who is always who's at peace, whatever happens, you're at peace. Right? It's a form of richness, it is contentment. Lah. Whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, decreed. Right, so it's a great uh, enrichment you know, of the heart. And this our Sheikh has said right, in his uh, in his majlis many, many, many times, right, leave your plannings, right? That is um uh, uh leave your plannings to the one who has created you, right? Subhanahu wa ta'ala and be at rest. Right. So it means entrust it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you try your best, you know, mashallah, and I think when I, when I was studying in, in Tarim, so many times, you will plan an entire event, plan, 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 anybody who's been there, you know, like, you plan all kinds of things, and on the day itself, nothing that you plan goes as planned. <laughs> you plan all, but then the thing is that, that's always one thing, because you plan it as a form of ibadah. Uh, as a form of ibadah, you plan, but you get upset, and nothing that you go, that you plan goes as planned. You don't get upset, it's just out of, out of your control. Right, you know, somebody uh, the rain fed, the rain came, or suddenly there was a sandstorm, or suddenly you know all kinds of things happen, right? And then you say, Alhamdulillah, you know, we plan all of these things. Now everything is delayed. Alhamdulillah, whatever Allah has says, has decreed, right, it will happen. Right? So you know, so so you leave it to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So you never see them, you know, uh, get very very upset. Right? So and mashallah, that's why you said that you know that you know a person when you when you travel with that person, because when you travel with people, people plan. Their travels, right? You have to be here at this time. You have to do this. You have to bring that. You have to, you know, you do all kinds of plannings, right? And then on a day yourself, right? Things happen that's beyond your control, right? And in fact, in the, in the first place, nothing is in your control. Right? But then you go, you go there. They say, no, you can't have this kind of visa. Where they can't have visa, and or they say this, or they say that, or they, they they do all kinds of things. And you're like, like we pretty plan all these things out. You don't know that the khair that is in there. Right? As soon as you put your istikhara, right? You have done your, uh, you, you've read your yasins. You did your wilid for the morning. Right? All this protection that that's, that's, that's going on. So whatever happens thereafter, right? You miss you miss the train, miss the bus, miss this, miss that. Right? Fall sick, cannot go. Right? All of these things don't feel, don't feel upset. Alhamdulillah, tafwid. You know, and trust the to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and carry on. Right? Whatever it is, is dunya. It's dunya. Or the person cheat you, and you have, could have, 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 have figured out that the person was a cheat, right? They, they took all their money and they went away, <laughs> right? I mean, for them, ma'asiyat, right? Uh, and then for you, ta'at, right? Ta'at that, okay? Uh, couldn't have stopped that in any way, right? Then for you to just stay where you are, lah. Habis. <laughs> right? I mean, if you can react, uh, I mean, how you react also. Right, so you just, I mean, if you can react, you just say that, you know, uh, if you want to stop, uh, we don't yet also like to stop that person from cheating other people, you know, or reporting to the police, whatsoever, but all in, 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 uh, report lah. Yeah lah, so it's all, it's all in, in ibadah. Uh, what is your ibadah? So your ibadah is nahi al-munkar. 
Uh, that is your ibadah. And then he's munkar, he's doing a munkar, right? and there are people out there who will be at risk. So you're you're, you're doing your part in society to stop a crook right, from doing what it is. Right? But do you like go? Uh, you go on and on and on and on. Let's say for example, they run away. It's a, it's a foreign person took the money and left. You got no way of getting to that person. Dah lah, you need to you report. They're gonna go every single day, fretting about it. You know, talking about it, angry about it, over and over again. So he says you're distracted. Like you're not gonna worship properly. Like you're gonna be or like you know or like someone who has this happened to them and they want to go for Hajj or Umrah. And I've met people who will, will, will blame Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You know, I save all this money to go for Hajj and you let someone cheat me out of it. And then and then they go into ma'asyah. Right, that is ma'asyah by, by blaming Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and saying that you know all this hard earned money right, that I wasted because I want to go for Hajj and Umrah. I want to go and like like. So, you know, <laughs> going into the wrong direction, you're being tested. You made this money, all this left. And how the how the Sahaba were, and uh, and mashallah, you can find every one of these things that he's saying. You can find an example in the Sirah, a very beautiful example in the Sirah. Right, the the um this the situation of Hudaybiyah. Right, Hudaybiyah, they came all the way for Umrah. Right, they walked right from Mecca to Medina, from Medina to Mecca. Right, they displayed clearly they were there for Umrah. They were in ihram, the talbiya, they brought their animals, they didn't bring any uh, weapons except for what is needed for, for travel. It was clear to them right, that, that we are coming here for Umrah and the Meccans know it. Right, so at this point, right, I mean, you'd be very, very upset if we turned you back and right, say, so, you, know, you can't come in. Why? Just not this year, we're not prepared. Right, and he said, well, we came all the way. Right, no, not this year. Go back, go back. Right. I mean, the, the Sahaba, it, it was it was difficult on the Sahaba to come and, and be faced with a closed door and then to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi sign this. You know, when I was sitting to the kids, they were saying to them, can you imagine, you went all the way there and somebody at the gate said, he cannot come in. And you say, why? Because we don't like you all. Go home. Right. And you say, you, of course you get upset, right? You, very, you spend all that money, that time, effort. They had brought their animals, having travel, all that. Right. You, you're very, very upset. And they have no right to stop you from coming in. Right. And, and you know you're on, you're on, you're, you, you have every right to go in. Right. But then, at that point, what was obedience? Obedience, I mean, uh, what is ta'at? What is uh, uh, worship? It is obedience to the Prophet Wasallam. He has signed the document. And he said, go home. Right, so that is the obedience. Right, that, 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 that is the ibadah. The ibadah is regardless of what you think and regardless of who's right and who's wrong. Right? At that point in time, what is the worship? Right? The worship is obedience to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he has signed a document, ten years of peace, right? and then go home next year come back for Umrah, right? and which means that they have to break their, they have to uh, break their, their ihram and they have to buy Adam and they have to actually sell to their animal. And they have because they, they were uh, they were they were stopped from entering into Mecca. They were already in Ihram. Right. So you know, mashallah. So that's why when when this happened and he signed the document, right, Sayyidina Omar was very upset actually. Sayyidina Omar went to Rasulullah first, you know, and said, Aren't you on the truth? And he says, Yes, we're on the truth. Aren't you the Prophet of Allah? Yes, I am. Right. Then, you know, and, you know, what 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 are we doing? Why are we giving in? They saw it as, as the Muslims being on the losing end. Right. And then he says that this is from the from the from the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's not doing things on his own accord. And Sayyidina Umar went to Abu Bakr. He said, yeah, yeah, Abu Bakr, I'm still on the truth. He repeated the same questions. And then Abu Bakr repeated, said, said, do you, who do you think he is? He's the Prophet. Hey, where do you, does he get his commandments from? Allah. Khalas. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> don't, you know, don't, don't be worried about this. And Sayyidina Umar, he, after he, he felt... Um, he felt guilty la. He went and he like, like in a sense not question but like just like should displeasure like like, like couldn't uh, his appointment la. He couldn't, couldn't wrap his man his mind around that why are we giving in to this like like nonsensical conditions ah like, why why must you give in like, it's so nonsensical right, but then he he felt he felt ashamed that he did that so he hid himself actually <laughs> he was afraid and then some called him. Uh, saying that a verse had revealed and he was so afraid that Allah had said now a verse to call him <laughs> right, but then uh, Allah revealed in Surah Fatah that we have given you a clear victory right, so there's some calls in Umar and those in Umar about the verse that it is a clear victory you will see trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and trust the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right, don't, don't let your own you know, thinking and your own rationalization uh, cloud your judgment when you're in face of a clear instruction. 
Uh, so just when it says a clear instruction. So Islam has instructed you to do this. Right? But your judgment says, oh, but logically speaking, if I do that, right, how is that going to help me? Uh, so you're trying to go by your own logic. Right? But the hukum says, do this. Alas, the hukum is black and white, it's clear. Uh, so then, then you don't have your own you know, uh, reasoning come in. There is no space for reasoning. When it comes when you come to a black and white, clear haram or halal, you know, or obedience or disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? it's only when it's not clear. Uh, so then comes the reasoning. Right? To try and see which is what is the best thing to do at this point in obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that is only when it's unclear. Right? So, and then when you have done it in the best of your ability and you do istikhara and everything, you leave the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you don't, you don't worry thereafter. There's a the story of Nabi Ibrahim. So, so many other prophets, they all had this happen to them. Right? But you just have to let go of any form of planning on your part and do what you are commanded to do. Nabi Ibrahim is like the the the, the, the prime example. Eh? Leave your wife there, leave your child there. Just you know, like go and slaughter your child with knife. He, he uh, placed it on the throat of Nabi Ismail, and he was in, with every intention to go and slaughter Nabi Ismail. And we are thinking, what is the way out? And there's no what's the it's no way out. It's just do what he was doing it already, but Allah didn't give any permission for a, for a knife to slaughter Nabi Ismail alayhi salam. I have full tafweed right, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Full uh, entrusting the matter right, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Alhamdulillah Okay, so inshallah, I think in 3 o'clock, should we continue? He's going to in the some poetry again Yeah, he will, uh, so the first one is basically uh, For your heart to be at ease right, And the second one right, is for you um, uh, For you to, to reach what is good for you Right, in that, uh, in the future, right. So when you entrust the matter to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, right. So inshallah next week we continue, lah. Right? So we don't uh, go into the next one yet. Right? We just so it's mashallah. He he just very quickly addresses the matter, da. And there's the matter, you just understand this, da. Right? But he will he will go through different questions, lah. And then he will just say, if you say if you say if you say, then he will respond more or less in the same manner. <laughs> it was never you in the first place. Right, and in, in the poetry he says, and for whosoever who does not know, you know, if if in something that is beloved, is there benefit or is there uh is there harm or something that he dislike, right? And that he, right, for him to uh to to, to please his matter with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to tr- entrust the matter to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, right, because he can't he can't figure it out. Right, by himself, is there going to be harm or uh, or benefit in this matter? And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the one, right? He is the one uh, who will protect you, right, Subhanahu wa Taala, uh, and He will remove uh, from a person that uh, whatever is uh, bad for him, and He is the one, right? Who will uh, who is more gentle and more compassionate on a person, right? Than his own father and his mother, Subhanahu wa Taala. So you entrust the matter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Uh, my slides are just going to be like this. I'm try and inshallah find time and do the slides. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Any questions online? Let's see those who are online. Okay. There are no questions online. We will continue with our dua. We will stop here for today, inshallah. 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 سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك صلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته